Hi everyone, I hope this video helps. I've had a lot of questions about materials and so I asked my dad, a retired filtration expert, and here's what we came up with. Here are the tools we'll use and you can hand stitch or machine sew this mask. We used the pattern from the New York Times, uh, linked below in the description. You can use an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper to make your pattern. I increased the size to accommodate our three layers. If you have a bigger face or a beard, you may want to enlarge your pattern by increasing only the height. Making this larger, taller mask will give you more room for your mouth to move while talking. After some research and conferring with my dad, we decided to, on using 100% cotton batting for the main filter material. Cotton fibers are better at trapping particles than synthetics. I can get more into that on another um, video. We chose cotton flannel also for its uh, filtering and moisture wicking potential. And for the outside, we chose a 100% cotton high thread count non-stretch cloth to mainly protect the other layers from dirt. To form the shape over the nose, we're using plastic coated twist tie wires. You'll need at least two per mask. Cut four strips out of any non-stretch fabric. We'll be using an iron for making these. If the one inch feels a little too small, for you to fold in the raw edges, make them wider, like two inches or three inches. Really, you can use anything um, that's like a flat shoelace even, instead of making these. I don't recommend using stretchy fabric, it's really hard to untie. If you've decided on another material for your ties, go ahead and skip to the next step. So now we're going to sew down the open edge. And tie a knot in one end. This will keep it from fraying in the wash. With your pattern, cut out the three pieces of cloth for the layers. Cotton cloth with high thread count, like quality bed sheets. Cotton batting, the thin kind, about a quarter inch thick. Cotton flannel, the fluffy side will be away from your face when you wear the mask. Some flannels are easy to tell which is the fluffy side, but some, like baby blanket fabric, can be a little harder. Either way, your judgment is going to be just fine. Here I've placed the cotton pretty side up. Place the ties in the corners. Place the flannel fluffy side up. Place the batting on top press down, and flip over. I like to double check my layers before I stitch. So here you have the pretty side face towards the non-fluffy side with the ties in between and the batting on the bottom. Here I've marked out where I'm going to stitch with a quarter inch seam allowance. You want to leave an opening at the top. This will be where we'll put the nose wires in and also allow us to turn it right side out. 
Start your stitching one and a half to two inches from the center. Be sure to catch all the layers with the stitching. And don't be hard on yourself if your stitching isn't perfectly straight. It'll all work out in the end. Be sure to stop two to three inches before reaching the start of your stitching. You need to leave about two to three inches for your opening. Clip away the extra batting and be careful not to cut into the stitching. I leave the batting long around the opening. Cut away the extra fabric from the sides. This is going to eliminate extra fabric and make folding the pleats easier. Don't cut any fabric from around the opening. Now turn it inside out. Yay, look at those ties. And go ahead and tug on the ties to pull the corners out. You're bound to find some twist ties around the house from packaging of all sorts. Be sure it's plastic coated so the wire is protected when washed. This is from broccoli and it's plastic coated but it feels a bit like paper. Use at least two wires and untwist any messiness. Bend over each end. This makes sure the wire won't poke out of the fabric with wear and washing. I'll just demo each wire example. For the length of the wire, I make them just long enough to go over the nose plus a little. This makes sure that I have a good fit and there's not extra lift up past your cheeks. I'm going to use the twist tie wire from the garden shed. Two pieces. And I'll try to straighten them out best I can. Tuck them into the opening, one at a time, and scoot them around until they feel flat and centered. Fold in the fabric edge, and be sure the wires are not on top of each other. I use a wide zigzag stitch to lock down each wire. Start in the front of the wire ends and stitch slowly. This will help you not break a needle.
Here I flip around to stitch the other wire. I'm going to use an iron to crease the pleats before stitching. Three or more of these pleats across the mask will create the room for your face. I work without pins at this thickness, so I just refold the fabric from the ironing before I stitch. It may look invisible, but the fabric just folds right back into place. I do two lines of stitches each side to make sure the pleats sit flat and this area of the mask seals best to the face. So there's the nose wire at the top, and now let's do some pleats under the chin. Press each pleat with the iron. I do just one line of stitching to lock down these pleats. Here you can see I added two more pleats. After trying it on, I felt it could be a little tighter to my neck. I also added another pleat to the side. Now try it on, see how it feels, and check for any gaps. Tighten the ties if it feels too loose. The wire should hug nicely around your nose, and yay! You're done! Although these masks are not a guarantee against pathogens, we hope that these masks will offer a little bit more protection to caregivers and those people that have to be exposed for long periods of time. If you like this video, please hit that button and share. Every watch and share helps me as a content creator. I hope this video helped and bye for now!